by our patients to put together a weight loss program. And for so many people, I would say, well, just quit eating, quit eating sugar and start working out. And for some people, probably about 20% of people, it works fantastic. They do it, they lose the weight, but for most people, it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because there's a lot of reasons that we've realized why people don't lose weight. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. We're going to go over all the reasons why we believe America is so overweight and what we believe has to be done to lose that weight. I just read that the weight loss industry in America is a $20 billion industry. I mean, that's enormous. And um, of that, 95% of the people who go on a weight loss program are heavier one year afterwards. So it's basically $20, million, $20 billion that we're essentially flushing down the toilet. And I talked to someone recently who ran a weight loss program and they said that every weight loss program works and it's true. But almost none of them work and help you keep the weight off because they don't address why people have actually gained weight in the first place. They're simply starving people um, and then people put the weight right back on. I'm going to go through a couple stats. So, unfortunately, 69.5% of people in America are either overweight or obese. So almost 70% of us. Which makes us the most overweight country on earth in the history of the world. So chances are, when you're walking around Medina, you're seeing the fattest people that have ever lived anywhere on the face of the earth at any time in history. That's kind of messed up, right? <laughs> So, I don't feel like we as Americans are more lazy than the rest of the world. I feel like there's good reasons why we're putting weight on and not able to lose it. I want to start with this. This is, um, many of you have seen this, I've showed it in a lot of talks. This is from the Center of Disease Control. This is their st stat and map of obesity in this country. So, the way it works is uh, states that are dark blue like Indiana, represent 15 to 19 percent of the population that was clinically obese in 1986. And I'm just going to go through the years and I want you to see what's happened. Dark blue like Michigan is there 15 to 19 percent. 94 1995, 1996, 97, Indiana leading the way again is 20 to 24 percent of the population that's obese. 98, 99, I think that's when McDonald's came out with a supersized menu. <laughs> 2000, 2001, 2000, um, the orange is 25 to 29 percent of the population. 2003, 2004, 2005. Um, that, and that's the last one I have. This is from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And supposedly this was a breakthrough study that came out in 1998. And they found that diet alone and calorie restriction alone is not enough to predict weight loss. Um, and so just about every diet that we're doing goes to restricting your calories um, and trying to burn more calories. And unfortunately, what the stats are showing us is that trying to just change your diet and exercise is not successful in most cases. So here's the reasons what we found is why people gain weight. One, and this is the biggest one, and this is what I'm going to talk to you mostly about tonight, is how our bodies burn energy and the fuel that we get um, and how we transition that fuel into energy. Next one is hormonal imbalance. We all know somebody who has either a thyroid issue or an issue with their estrogen and progesterone and they just cannot lose weight no matter what they do. Um, toxicity. We're exposed to about 82,000 chemicals per year in this country. Uh, nutritional deficiencies. No exercise or the wrong type of exercise. And poor thinking or behavioral patterns which are associated with weight gain. In our office, we have a physical medicine nutrition office. And when people come to us and they're not doing well, what we have found that has really revolutionized how we treat people is that we do multiple things on people. And so from a physical medicine standpoint, we found that chiropractic works really well. Nutrition works really well. 
uh, physical therapy works well, injections and decompression work well, but when we put them together in the right order and we do them all at the same time, it works really, really, really well. And so when somebody can't lose weight, you might have one or two of these things, which is why you're not losing weight. It might be that you're just simply eating the wrong type of foods and your body can't process those foods. It might be that you are getting home at 8 o'clock at night and your social time is to spend with your spouse and eat dinner. Um, that's part of what happens to me. I get home late and I want to eat dinner and after I eat dinner I can't stop eating. Um, for some people it's toxicity. You know, we do everything they starve themselves, they exercise, but the body has to hold fat if you're toxic. If you try to starve yourself and you lose weight, but you do it in a way that toxifies you more, you're gonna gain that weight back. Um, we all know if your thyroid or, or, or your hormonal system, like I said, is not working, you're not gonna lose the weight. And so what we have to do is we have to address all of these. So let's start with the most challenging. Is the endocrine system. Um, the endocrine system is why most of us in America have almost an impossibility to lose weight. So the four organs that run your metabolism basically, so your hormones are sort of like the gas pedal on the metabolism. And your adrenals, your thyroid, your pancreas, and your hypothalamus are those gas pedals. Has everyone heard of those four terms in this room? Yeah, good. So let's start with the adrenals first. Does anyone know what the adrenals do? Oh, come on, a lot of you are patients. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. It's stress, right? How many of you in this room are stressed? <laughs> okay, every hand went up. Good. Um, what happens when, let's say you're driving down the highway and you see a cop. <laughs> I know I have at least one cop in this room. Um, what happens? You're going 90 miles an hour, like I like to do. <laughs> Get an adrenaline Correct. All of a sudden you produce tons of adrenal hormone and then somehow they pull over the person beside you. What happens next? <sighs> oh, right? Your adrenal hormones come back down to where they should be. Now what happens if you're going through that same type of stress all day long every day? It's like when you wake up it's like a starter gun and you just sprint all day long from trying to get kids ready to going to work to being late to work to having to do stuff when you get home just constantly all day long your stress levels are high. What happens is it's called phase two of adrenal stress and what happens is your hormone levels start to come up, especially your cortisol. And we can always tell when people start to get cortisol problems because they start to get belly fat. And I'm gonna talk about this in just a second. Especially the fat right through here. Like people are skinny, you put your arms up. There's actually a, a medical test. If you run your arms down somebody's side and then go out right there, it's called a cortisol test. So you know they have an adrenal problem. If you're under stress long enough, what happens is your adrenal glands actually fail. Um, and your hormone levels drop way down. And this is usually when people are just exhausted. Um, and this is when most weight problems really start. And I'm gonna talk in a minute what the biggest stress is on people. So it looks kind of like this, right? So this is normal. Um, the weight right through here, like you don't gain in your legs, you don't gain your arms, it's around your tummy. And we see these all the time. Um, and we always know it's an adrenal problem. Uh, some of the other symptoms of adrenal problems are people that are low energy, people that tend to get lightheaded when they stand up quickly, people that really crave sugar and salt, um, people that crash after lunch. Those are people that are adrenal type symptoms that um, that's usually why they gain weight. The second one is thyroid. Almost every person that we check in this office has some degree of thyroid dysfunction. And this is the frustrating thing is that it doesn't show up on blood work. So there's a man named Dr. Barnes and he found that 40% of people that are hypothyroid, um, it doesn't show up in their blood. And even if it does show up in your blood, most doctors just check one hormone. They don't check all the thyroid hormones. And so when we start going through the different thyroid um, symptoms, you know, I have people that come in and they just got back from their doctor and they said, you know, my doctor says my thyroid is normal but I can't lose weight, I'm cold all the time, I have dry skin, my hair is falling out, I'm depressed, and I cry extremely easily. Um, have you ever heard the saying, if it looks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck, and it walks like a duck? Um, people are either, thought they are, are just straight 
clinically hypothyroid and it's been missed, which is, happens in a lot of the cases, or um, they're just barely subclinical and it's enough to slow down your metabolism so you can't actually lose weight. Um, one test that we do on this is we often check people's temperature. So the type of woman who says, um, I'm freezing in the summertime, I'm freezing in the wintertime, and then I'm extremely hot, that's usually a person who can't lose weight because their thyroid's not functioning properly. Um, and people who are hypothyroid tend to gain weight all over. They gain it in their face, they gain it in their arms, they gain it in their legs. Um, they tend to get a very round head. I can always tell a woman who's hypothyroid um, just by the way they look. Like I said, um, round head, they stand, they always stand like this because for a certain part of their nervous system that holds their thumbs forward shuts off. So I see people walking like this. They tend to lose the lateral third of their eyebrows. Um, yeah, I see everyone in the, in the room grab for their eyebrows. Um, and then the last one is the pancreas. Insulin is really, really powerful when it comes to lose weight. So when is insulin produced? We need sugar. And what does insulin do? It pushes sugar into the cell. Okay? And so there is a staggering number of diabetic people in this country. Um, and a staggering number of young children that are diabetic. And it's because of the vast quantities of sugar that we're eating. And basically what happens is when your body is exhausted and can no longer produce enough insulin to push the sugar into the cell your blood sugar starts to rise and you get type 2 diabetes, right? Um, the interesting thing is that um, there's an opposite hormone that the pancreas always also produces and it's called glucagon. Has anyone ever heard of glucagon? A couple people. Glucagon is the hormone that's released when you do not have enough simple sugars in the blood and glucagon takes fat from your body and converts it to sugar, which helps with weight gain. So how many of you have had me tell them at some point in time to quit eating sugar? <laughs> Almost every hand goes up. And so this is the tricky thing. Um, the biggest stress on your endocrine system is sugar. Your thyroid, your adrenals, your pancreas, which is the gas pedal of your metabolism, none of them can function properly if you're eating too much sugar. There's a well-documented um, syndrome in this country called, we call it, sugar intolerance or carbohydrate intolerance. And we have lots and lots of people perform this test when they come in, where we say for the next two or three weeks, you can have no sugar. And most people come back and they say, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much better I feel. Um, my energy's back. Uh, I'm cleaning out the closets. My brain has cleared. Um, I'm no longer craving sweets. My spouse is so much nicer. Uh, everything is, seems better because you feel better. And the reason that you feel better is because you've taken that major stress off the body, which is sugar, and all of a sudden your endocrine system, the gas pedal of your metabolism, can turn back on again. Um, and it's literally like an allergy. If you go over certain grams of carbohydrates, everything shuts down. And so it's really important for people to figure out how much they can tolerate. For some people, it's almost nothing. We have let sugar be a socially accepted drug. It is one of the most powerful drugs on earth. It is one of the most addictive. It is a neurotoxin. It shuts your system down when you go over a certain amount. And yet, um, we're consuming, on average, about 160 pounds per person per year. Most studies that I've read say that your endocrine system starts to shut down after about 100 grams per day. To put that in perspective, one bagel has 75 grams. And as soon as you go above that level, again, your hormonal system can't work right. And the last uh, organ is your hypothalamus. This is in the brain, and it basically regulates um, hormone production for the rest of the body. And so, like I was saying, um, there's different phases of hormonal fatigue. There's phase one where your body tries to keep up, and when you're in fa or phase two, actually, when your body's stressed and all your hormone levels come up, and then there's phase three, which is the exhaustion phase, where they all drop back down. Most people who gain weight are in the phase three. The next thing that causes lots of weight gain in this country is toxicity. Um, I said earlier, there's 82,000, I got this from the FDA, there's 82,000 known chemicals that are dumped into our environment each year. 
less than 5% of those are actually checked for their safety. And so we're just being exposed to enormous amounts of chemicals. Can anyone name a couple of those chemicals for me that are in our food that are known to shut down your endocrine system and are scientifically proven to make you gain weight? Does anyone know? Mm -hmm. Any others? I'll go through them in a second. This is my uh, favorite slide on Earth. So these are a couple of them. So these are some of the things that are known chemicals that shut down um, your endocrine system and make you gain weight. Are any of those in your diet? <laughs> no? Okay. So let's go through those in, let's go through those <laughs> in detail. Okay, so here's some of the worst ones. So MSG, that's been mentioned. I read a study that was uh, in the New York Times recently, and it checked 753 Chinese people in two parts of China. One part of China where they have, they use lots of MSG, and there's no, um, and they adjusted this for um, uh, all other environmental factors. There's one part of China where they use MSG, and one part of China where they didn't. And they found that people that consume MSG are um, three times more likely to be overweight than people who don't consume MSG for that one factor. So what is MSG in? Chinese food. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Soups. Yeah, it's in everything and it's hidden. So you guys got to look. Uh, if it says uh, yeast extract or flavor enhancer or um, uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, yeast, uh, yeast um, any sort of extract or flavor enhancer has usually got MSG in it. So you got to be really careful about just packaged foods in general because it's in so much stuff. Anyone know what... Um, what phthalates are? These are in plastics. So um, another way of calling this is xenohormones. Anyone ever heard that term? So um, xenohormones, which are in plastic and a whole bunch of other things, act like estrogen in the body. So they act like the hormone that makes you retain fat in water. And so basically, anytime you eat something out of plastic, and especially if you heat in plastic, you're putting this all over your food. Another one is um, hormones, antibiotics, chemicals in water. The average person is, in America is taking 2.4 medications. A lot of these medications cause weight gain. What they do is they take, when you go to the bathroom, it goes into the city water supply, they recycle that water, and it comes back in your fountain. Um, and then they take out what they can, but they can't get them all. And then they add chlorine back in to stabilize it. I know this is getting a little monotonous. Which, and chlorine is another thing that suppresses your endocrine system. Um, arsenic is fed to animals to get them to market weight faster. Um, again, the pharmaceuticals and medications. High fructose corn syrup has been shown to create obesity. And so these things are absolutely everywhere in our society. Um, and so any weight loss program has to address these chemicals and toxicity and your exposure to them. So the first one, again, I'm going to go through this again, was your endocrine system. The second one was exposure to toxins and getting rid of toxins from your body. And the third one is exercise. How many of you exercise? I, I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of liars. Yeah. <laughs> um, according to the stats, and who knows how true this is, 3% of Americans exercise on a regular basis. So I'm going to do a little chemistry lesson. Try not to get lost. Um, where do we get our energy? Where does energy come from? Like the original source. All energy, every bit that each one of us gets comes from one place. Does anyone know what it is? The sun. Correct. And then what happens next? How do we get it on Earth and convert it? Something called photosynthesis, right? Plants take the sun energy and they convert it. And then what happens to plants? Or we eat them, or animals eat them, right? And then we eat the animals. And so when I'm talking about basic energy production, we have to understand how energy is working in the body. Now, there's two systems that can happen with energy. Um, well, there's three forms of food in, in our society. There's protein, there's carbohydrates, and there's fat, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, um, protein gives us almost no energy. It's just there for rebuilding our bodies. Like uh, Lewis and Clark almost starved to death, even though they could have all the deer they could eat. But there's, there's no fat and there's no sugar in the deer, so they was pro providing them no energy. And so all of our energy is coming from sugar or fat. 
Now, where in our body is that energy produced? Where are the cells in our body that produce energy? They're in our muscles. Um, and so, for one, people who don't exercise have a really, really hard time losing weight because they're not producing energy the way they should. And, and they have less muscle that produces less energy and to burn the energy. And uh, I remember watching Oprah over the years. How many of you have been fans of Oprah? I remember um, faintly, and I don't remember how much it was, but she lost an enormous amount of weight on this starvation diet where she could have like 400 calories a day. And uh, they had a show where she came out with a wheelbarrow full of fat, and she had lost that fat. She got into her size 2 jeans, and she had this big rah-rah session. That was the last day she was ever in size 2 jeans. Because as soon as she started to eat again, as studies have shown, she started to put the weight back on. And so after going through tons of things, she finally found a trainer who explained to her that you have to work out to have a metabolism. And so uh, I was listening to a weight loss expert this week, and he was talking and he said, look, people don't want to have to eat right. They don't want to have to worry about exercise. You have to find a weight loss program that where they don't have to eat right, they don't have to exercise, and they can keep the habits they want. This guy is selling a weight loss program that's going to have you 5 to 10 pounds heavier in a year later. You have to exercise. There's no way around it. Now with exercise, there's two types of exercise and therefore two types of muscles. There's aerobic and anaerobic. And this is the Krebs cycle. Does anyone remember that from high school, one or two of you? Well, basically, the way we produce energy, whether it's from fat, fatty acids, or from sugar, glucose, is hydrogen is cleaved off. And, and as hydrogen cleaves off, it creates uh, energy. And it goes through this whole cycle. Now, when you, do, when you burn fat, you get about 36 ATP, or 38 ATP even, um, for one molecule of fat. When you, when you do sugar or anaerobic, you get two. So anyways, it's, one's a very efficient process. You could run from here to Florida on your reserve from fat. You could make it from like here to Brunswick before you'd pass out if you were just running off of sugar. And so this program that we've designed is basically one thing. It's to convert your body from burning sugar to burning fat. That's the whole idea of this. And we just ordered a, a device, which we don't have yet, but we can measure your respiration and from your respiration determine how much of your energy is coming from burning sugar and how much is coming from burning fat. And so that's going to be part of it is testing people. And so any program has to have exercise. You have to do, and the more aerobic muscle you build, the more fat burning capacity you have because that's how you burn fat. And so um, the program has you work out with a heart rate monitor. And so here's basically the program. Sorry that's so small. Number one, you have to do testing. Blood work um, and some other tests to determine that one, you're healthy enough to lose weight. And two, that you don't have a drastic thyroid, adrenal, or pancreas problem. Okay. Um, next, you have to be held accountable. I was talking to another woman. She says every weight loss program works. But the only ones that work are the ones where people know what's going to happen. Um, and in the, that accountability, what we do is the first stage is we have to get sugar out of the diet. You have to get sugar out of the diet. And when you get sugar out of the diet, most people go into ketosis. So we monitor your urine to make sure that you actually reach a state of ketosis. We also have a scale that tells us whether you're losing fat, water, or muscle. A lot of weight, weight loss programs, starvation, you're just losing water and, and even muscle. And so you lose five pounds and you're thrilled, but you didn't actually lose any fat at all. And so you have to be checking weekly to make sure that actual fat is coming off your body. Um, and then also with measurements. Again, break the sugar addiction. And then once the sugar addiction has been broken, your body can't process sugar if there's no sugar available. So it has to be a drastic conversion from sugar to fat. And so the first two to three weeks, you have to get off sugar completely if you want to reset how your body burns energy. After that, you can start to bring some things back in, nourishing, nutritional, dense foods, and your body won't go back to burning sugar. Most people have damaged their endocrine system. Um, some people almost beyond saving. 
Um, their thyroid, their adrenals, their hypothalamus, and their pancreas are so bad. Many of these people ha are diabetic. They have li very little thyroid function. Their adrenals are exhausted. So this, any program that helps people lose weight and keep it off has to fix those organs. And so what we've done is we've come up with nutrients that do that and a diet that helps your organs come back. Um, you have to replace lost nutrients. Um, and then for many people, you have to actually suppress appetite. You have to detoxify, you have to exercise, and you have to change your behavioral patterns. And so we've come up with a 12-week course to actually change how you think and act with food. You have to break all of the uh, addictions that have basically gotten you fat.